this'll put you out of commission. It's not hard to have fun in Monster Hunter Stories 2. Unlike its more grown-up counterpart, the world of stories is a whole lot more forgiving. It's populated with many of the monsters we've come to know. Only this time, we're battling them in exciting turn-based battles. You even get free chances before you're out. Even so, here are some handful tips that will get you smooth sailing through the first few chapters. The original Monster Hunter series relies on skill-based combat, meaning everything happening on screen takes place real-time. Players prepare their hard-earned weapons and items to face off against deadly monsters that roam the land. It's difficult. Some would say it's the earliest form of Souls-like gaming, but that's another story. Stories, on the other hand, is a spin-off of the brutal Boss Rush series from Capcom. Instead of the frenetic real-time combat, Stories is a turn-based RPG. It's a far cry from the series' familiar combat since it's aimed at anyone interested in the monster collecting like Pokémon. We get to befriend the monsters, but we're still taking down those who upset the ecosystem and use their body parts for scrap. It started on the 3DS and it seems like they want to test the waters and see how their little kid-friendly Monster Hunter would fare in the new era of gaming. Look, it's a cool Yaku! If you're new to the series, you probably couldn't tell one from the other. To put it simply, all the ones you're friends with are monsties and anything that attacks you is a monster. And then there's herbivores that just chill, but pack a mean punch when provoked. You can't catch monsters as easily as you would in Pokémon. You'll have to get them straight from their source, their nests. Monster dens litter the overworld and inside. You'll find all sorts of monster eggs just waiting to be picked. If you're a little more discerning, you should watch out for rare monster dens. They're golden and you can see them from miles away. Inside you'll find some eggs that have golden glows. But the best and the rarest ones are the ones that glow with a rainbow sparkle. Aside from glows, it can also be helpful to watch out for their weight and stinkiness. The heavier and stinkier, the better. These are the ones with the best genes, which means they'll have some combos in their genes that give them boosts in health, attack, defense, and other special skills. If you want to pocket a monster no matter the rarity, then get yourself some poke- I mean paintballs. Throw this at weakened enemies and they'll retreat to their special dents which will appear near you on the map. For more information about certain monsties, you can check the Monstipedia from the menu. Before any of that, you'll have to learn how to fight. If there's one thing you should know, monsters have no qualms about ambushing you if you're not looking. Luckily, you'll be able to sneak up on them too, letting you have one round of attacks before the fight even begins. Story's combat is pretty much the same rock-paper-scissors type beat. Power beats technical, technical beats speed, and speed beats power. If you forget, these attributes are arranged according to that order. Outmatch your enemies and you'll get a double attack bonus. Keep track of your monster's main attributes and switch them out as needed. You get one monster switch per turn, so make sure they correspond to your opponent's state or skills. Early on, most wyverns and smaller monsters are technical creatures. Velocidromes focus on speed, but turn to power run angry. Fanged beasts like Boldrome and Arzuros are power creatures, along with herbivores like the Aptonoth and Laranoth. Weapons are another thing to look out for. Like monsters, you can choose to switch them out once per turn. Monsters and their individual parts each have their own weaknesses. Sniff them out with different weapon types, swords for slashing, hammers for blunt damage, and bows for piercing. Rack up the broken parts of monsters and you'll find them useful in forging and upgrading weapons and armor. Bonus tip, kinship gauges fill up with each successful blow. If you and your monstie don't match up, you can still deal double attacks when you and your buddy's monstie sink, and you'll end up filling each other's gauge. For more damage, you can even wait for your buddies to fill up their gauges to deal a massive double kinship skill. To get in shape for every fight, you'll need some support. To get any locale's rarities, which will be important for forging weapons and combining, keep an ear out for that special sound. Stock up on heals and antidotes by gathering as many plants as you can. Other items will show up too, but it will assure you enough stock of herbs to get you by. You can use herbs on their own, or you can combine them with blue mushrooms for a more potent heal. 
Quick heals don't come out of nowhere. Instead of your stocks of herbs, quick heals take from your donut stock. Replenish with the recipe for donuts, bull meal wheat, and honey. One of the best early game heals is Life Suit. Instead of healing just one party member in battle, Life Suit lets you heal everyone. You can pick this up in your travels, but you can also get the recipe by completing the Shake That Suit quest from the quest board. For more recipes, make sure to check in on the quest board for helpful rewards for your labor. You can also scour the evidence for bottle caps, which can be exchanged for some useful items at the Melinx. Unlike monster dens, ever dens stay even after you've explored them. Each will have a finite number of bottle caps, but you can farm them for other chest items. Before every trip, make sure you make a visit to the prayer pot. Charms can make your life easy, but you can make it even easier with the leveled up pot. You earn a level for 5 charms you offer. If you level it up to 10, you can get a pick of all the free prayers. Beware though, the effects of prayers and charms do not stack. Egg farming is easier when you know what you're doing. Each monster you hatch has their own set of special genes that determine how well their stats will be. Getting three in a row of the same color or symbol means a bonus on certain aspects. With rare monsties, you can even get rainbow-colored spheres that will increase your chances of getting bonuses. Don't worry if your favorite Monsi's genes aren't all that. You can combine genes from one Monsi to another later on through a process called Rite of Channeling. Still, it's better to get Monsi's with great gene combos from the start. So get farming and get experimenting! Like this video? Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more. And click join to get community-exclusive posts and content.